We often have an idea of what we want to bring into our life, have a vision of who we want to be, have a desire. But the biggest thing that's blocking us from stepping into that truth is the belief. Now, if these negative beliefs are very strong in you, then how can you possibly create a loving, joyous, prosperous, healthy life? Somehow, your subconscious beliefs would always be contradicting you and making sure you do not obtain your goals. I find that resentment, criticism, guilt and fear cause more problems in our bodies and in our experiences than anything else. These feelings come from blaming others and not taking responsibility for our own lives. You see, if we are all responsible for everything that happens in our lives, then there is really no one to blame. Whatever is happening out there is only a mirror of our own inner thinking. When we have a problem, a difficulty, a struggle that is located inside, and we're looking for the solution outside someplace outside of ourselves. It would be like going to the doctor and telling him all of your symptoms. And the doctor says, oh boy, you've got a lot of symptoms. And he starts writing out prescriptions. You need a prescription for this symptom, you need a prescription for that symptom. And finally, he gets this four or five, and you go to walk out, and you say, well, I'd like my prescriptions. He said, no, 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 I'll give this one to your mother-in-law, and I'll give this one to your neighbor, and I'll give this one to your daughter, and I'll give this one to your father. And, I mean, you're the one with the struggles and with the difficulties. Expecting somebody else to change or something outside of you to get better in order for you to make your life work is something you have to really take a hard look at. It's in here. Uh, we have to feel love for ourselves and love for life in order for us to have love in our life. And so then to instruct people how to teach their body emotionally how that future could feel like before it's made manifest. If they do it properly, their body as the unconscious mind begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment. And they're beginning to signal new genes in new ways that begins to change their body to look like the event has already occurred. So we need new ways of thinking, new ways of living, and it comes down to something very simple. The most simple is about love. The bottom line, do we love ourselves enough to live our lives in a way that gives our bodies what they need to do what they know how to do really well? Do we love ourselves enough to live and to think in a way that allows the best version of ourselves and the best versions of our families and communities to come forward? So when you stand in this place of knowing that if this time-space reality has created within you a desire for something, this time space reality will deliver the goods to you. So when you stand in that knowing and then you couple it with your belief in your righteousness or worthiness to receive it. When you're putting in a wish and a desire, put it in as if you already have it. I am healthy. Uh, I am a good relationship person, uh, you know, uh, I have a great job. But what's that? I say, it's like I already have it. And yet most people don't have it, so they'll say, I want a great job. I want a great relationship. I want to be healthy. And I go, make a recording of those words. We just said that. I want to be healthy. Today, right now, Tuesday, we're going to make a recording. I say, now come back in one year and let's push the button on that recording. And we come back a year later and it says, I want to be healthy. I go, it's a whole year and you still want to be healthy. I still don't have it, right? <laughs> you didn't say I am healthy. Uh -huh. you, all you're emphasizing, I have a desire to be healthy. I want to be healthy. I have a yeah. desire to be healthy. And I go, you can have that desire the rest of your life. You're not going to get healthy. You want to be healthy, you say, I am healthy. But then you look and say, yeah, but in reality, I'm sick. And I go, no, no. The function of the mind is to take the program and turn it into reality. So if I am sick, but I put a program in, I am healthy, the mind looks, uh, you know, like, well, wait a second. The program is I am healthy, but the body is not healthy. So what's the function of the mind? Create health in the body. It doesn't change the program. It changes the body. And so the idea is this. 
every time we put a program in, it has to be as if you already have it, in spite of the fact you could be dying of cancer. I go, I am healthy. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird. And I go, don't worry about it. Just put it on, I am healthy. Because once it is a program, the function of the mind is to manifest it as reality. Mm -hmm. That's the part. And so my little caveat, mm -hmm. you brought it up, and I'm emphasizing it. And that was simply this, that whatever you're downloading, you have to say it as if you already have it. Because if you put a future tense on it, I will, I want, I say, if you record that, uh, that means you will always will, you know, want to have it. You know, mm -hmm. I will do this. You won't get there. So uh, I just wanted to bring that in because if we're making a program, then you must make sure it says as if you already have it, in spite of the fact you don't. Top people look for the good in every situation. They know that it is always there. No matter how many reversals and setbacks they experience, they expect to get something good out of everything that happens to them. They believe that every setback is part of a great plan that is moving them inexorably toward achieving the great success that is inevitable for them. If your beliefs are positive enough, you will seek the valuable lesson in every setback or difficulty. You will confidently believe that there are many things that you have to learn on the road to achieving and keeping your ultimate success. You therefore look upon every problem as a learning experience. Napoleon Hill wrote, Within every difficulty or obstacle, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. With this kind of an attitude, you benefit from everything that happens to you, positive or negative, as you move upward and onward toward achieving your major definite purpose. There is a law of reversibility in psychology and metaphysics that says you are more likely to act yourself into feeling a particular way than you are to feel yourself into acting. What this means is that when you start off, you may not feel like the great success that you desire to be. You will not have the self-confidence that comes from a record of successful achievement. You will often doubt your own abilities and fear failure. You will feel that you are not good enough, at least not yet. But if you act as if you were already the person you desire to be with the qualities and talents that you desire to have, your actions will generate the feelings that go with them. You will actually act yourself into feeling the way you want to feel by the law of reversibility. If you want to be one of the top people in your business, dress like the top people, groom like the top people, organize your work habits the way they do. Pick the most successful people in your field and use them as your role model. If possible, go to them and ask them for advice on how to get ahead more rapidly. And whatever advice they give you, follow it immediately. Take action. When you start to walk, talk, dress, and behave like the top people, you soon begin to feel like the top people. You will treat other people like the top people do. You will work the way the top people work. You will start to get the results that the top people get. In no time at all, you will be one of the top people yourself. It may be trite to say, fake it until you make it but there is a lot of truth to it. Your main job in life is to create the mental equivalent within yourself of what you want to realize and enjoy in your outer world. Your focus must be on creating the beliefs within yourself that are consistent with great success you want to be in your outer world. You achieve this by challenging your self-limiting beliefs, rejecting them, and then acting as if they did not exist. You reinforce the development of new life, enhancing beliefs by increasing your knowledge and skills in your field, to the point where you feel equal to any demand or challenge. You accelerate the development of new positive beliefs by setting bigger and more exciting goals in every area. Finally, you act continually as if you were already the person that you desire to be. Your aim is to reprogram your subconscious mind for success by creating the mental equivalent in everything you do or say. Momentum develops the mindset. Momentum conditions the mind to confidence. Like just moving forward every day, even a small thing. If you just said every day, I'm gonna do three things to move my life forward. And you just did those three things every single day. Today I'm gonna do these three things to move my life forward. It could be sending an email, calling somebody, having that prospect meeting. It could be as simple as like, oh, okay, uh, uh, I'm gonna like, work towards this goal. I'm gonna finish this presentation. I'm gonna create this thing. Whatever it is for you, like do that thing. Maybe it's like, oh, today I'm gonna work out today. Great, you worked out. Your mind goes, I said I was gonna work out, I worked out. I developed more confidence because you were congruent 
with your intentions. See, action is what makes us congruent with our intentions, right? That old thing you've heard me say, if you've been studying my work for a long time, intention without initiative is just sorry hopes. It really is. Intention without initiative is just sorry hope. You have to apply yourself again. And I know you already know, listen, a lot of you watching this, you're already a confident person. Okay, what's the next level of action that will raise you up to the next level of success? What's the next level of action and bold decision making that will change your life? I know you might already be a confident person, so what's your next level of action? Well, Brendan, I already feel confident going up and talking to a person. Great, now go up and talk to four people. Good job. Okay, well, Brendan, I already feel good, you know, trying to put out this message. Great, do it again, be more vulnerable. Oh, Brendan, I, I already feel good, you know. I, I started the business and I built this. Great, double the business, let's see you do it. So when you challenge yourself to take actions that are a little bit outside your pay grade, a little bit outside your comfort zone, and you actually follow through, congruence comes in and you go, I set that intention, it was hard, I took the challenge, and I made it happen. That's it. That's really, truly it.